So um, I've got the bolts out, the, the nuts out. Uh, there was no washers on it, strange enough. Um, we're having an inspection of this gear inside. I'll show you later. That's quite good. So now we're going to flip it back over again. Now, we have one remaining bolt here, a nut, to get off. We took the other ones off the other day. I must have slackened that off already. That is one of the very rare ones that comes off. Um, you say that, alright? I keep asking you, you never replying to me, so you must be okay. We took all these bolts off here. Or the nuts, should I say. There's no selector in there. At least I don't think. Oh, that's a nut and bolt. No wonder I'm turning it around forever. Um, there we go. As I was mentioning to you before, there is Whitworth for the coarse thread, but this is BSF, this is the fine thread. Fine thread for steel, coarse thread for aluminium and cast iron. That bolt into there. Now with a bit of luck we should be able to lose this lump. Where's my favourite tool? Now. We want a part of the casting that we're least likely to damage. This is where we find there's another... Uh, there's another vault in somewhere. Oh, maybe not. There should be a paper gasket on here. Uh, yes, there was. <laughs> ah, that's it. Oh, that's got rid of that great big lump. Did I mention these were available in the shop? I'll put the leak below. Now you can see our problem. No, you can't. <laughs> I can, but you can't. There should be on the end of here a thread in the stub. There is nothing. So that shaft, exactly as I said, would be going like that. Not good. That's what's caused the damage. So the next thing... Uh, we've got to get this linkage off here because the... Uh, the front cover comes out this way, like the thrust bearing. Now this was an exceptionally good idea from Land Rover. They put the thrust bearing inside the gear oil and this plate ran on the clutch, which was equally flat, so you didn't really get much wear on that. Um, it didn't have an oil seal in it, it had a left hand uh, threaded slinger. So as you were going round that way, the oil was getting flung back into the gearbox. It's a very good idea, except when you're parked on a hill, because then the oil would just draw, draw out. Drain out. Now, the other day we tried to get this pin out of here, and we had a hell of a job, and I can understand why now. Let's have a quick look. Because somebody's had a go at it before, and it's already snapped off. Hmm. Now, when you're knocking pins and things like this out, you have to be very, very careful of something. That you don't want to put actual more thrust and braking 
bits inside there by hammering and clattering. So if you're gonna knock that pin out of there, like this away, you want to turn the box and support this with a socket or a big tube so you're banging on top of the bench. Let me ex let me try and um, let me try and get that out and I'll explain. Because it's not as easy as you think. Because there's a there's two pins, there's one that goes this way and there's one that goes that way. I think if we can get this one out first. This should probably if you can see that I have to point with my finger because the, the lens is so small. So <coughs> the, the lens, the screen's so small. There's our problem. The pin snapped off here. It should be like a, a T type, a pin with a hat on it, or a top. So what we're going to do is we're going to build up here and get some sockets to support that. It will become clear in a second. So this is what I was trying to say. We've got a piece of wood just to shim up and we've got a socket on the end of some bars. We're going to put that under there. So all the thrust when we are hammering and banging is going down into the table not under the bearing or the bushing here. Important. Now another thing we've got to do We've got to try and get this pin out. Now I'm going to try and heat this up, but there's a rubber here. Mmm, that's not good. So we're going to try and heat it like this. Now we're using the right size punch. That sounded promising and there's the pin. It isn't much of a pin, in fact it's no pin at all. It's uh, how it was driving is anybody's business. So that is so, where's it hot? A little bit warm. There's the pin. It is a bit warm. Where's some water? <laughs> Heat always nice. It just expands it that much. So there's the pin that came out. Look. That's it. That's all that was driving the clutch because there was half of it missing. I'll show you a good one when it comes out. So now, uh, we get some spray. You can see it boiling now. And we get a hammer and we're going to try and tap this fork out of here. That's coming. Now sometimes when you get things like this it's always best to go backwards and forwards. And what you do is you push the penetrating oil back into the hole. Like that look. Keep going. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, the pin, had, the pin had actually sheared off. Where's me, where's me porker? Where's me proddy thing on? Oh, we'll have to sort of get that out somehow. But you can probably see in here that the pin had sheared off wasn't a particularly good idea. So that's that out of the way. So we can get that mechanism moved. Now what we're going to do now is get this rubber off. I'll try not to destroy these rubbers because they're they're made of unobtainium I think. Mm -hmm. 
sorry for back to the cameras, but it's sometimes difficult to do this. A bit tricky, but we, like I say, we want to save this. We want to save this rubber as much as possible. Ah, fuck! Oh, what's it stuck on? They used to glue them on with the. Uh, I see the struggle here. There we go. It was glued round the inside and glued round here, so keep that because that's a highly important part. The next thing, why we took that out, you can see the other pin, the other pin goes through here, and lo, it all turns. Can you see that? That is good. That's good. So we've got to take that split pin out of there. Get a pair of pliers. In out, wash her out, and now we can pull the pin out. That is the length of the pin that came out, that's what it should be like, and that is what came out. Let's uh, take that out a bit. So that's, the, that's what they should look like, and that's what came out. Not good. Now we need to take that sleeve off there. So now we've got to pull this sleeve off. A pair of pliers usually take them off. My God, I was right again. That allows us now to bring that unit out of the front. Good, eh? You do get quite a few parts kicking about when you do jobs like this. The next thing we're going to do, now we partially stripped this down before, because we thought we were going to take the cover off, but we need to take the cover off. Now, these aren't too bad to do, but there's all the selector springs are in the top, so be careful and, and make sure your bench is uh, nice and clean. Get rid of all them little stones and things. We've got, we've got an awful lot of stones gathered up from the um, the engine mounts. See, there's not much to it once you get into it, is there? There's just, that's it. They are quite easy to do, aren't they? Right. So, we need to find our little socket again. Not that one. One thing when you start pushing things around the bench here. You lose things in a very quick way. There we go. Now these are tricky to get out, these front ones. These uh, little bolts on here, because they're so designed, these ones, these ones here, <coughs> you can't get a socket between them, so you take the first one out with the spanner. Next one you can get out with the socket. These are handed, these little things. If you're not sure, put a little notch to tell you which is left and right. There is a spring inside here that's pushing this cover. They are a bugger to get back in sometimes. You need to be have the strength of a lion. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 
I'll take the bolt out, remove the cover, there was a washer so save that. Now we'll take the spring out and you'll notice there's a little rubber, well it was rubber, uh, seal. We need to replace those because they're hard as iron. Now I've already got the other side off so that's not too bad. The next thing is we're going to take this one off here. This is uh, another plunger. Now inside here there should be some uh, steel balls. There will be a steel ball in here too with a spring. Um, we're not too concerned about that because they'll probably just drop in the gearbox. But if you're going to take the cover off once it's on the car, well it can be problematic. Oh well I've got that off, I'll take this off. We don't have to worry about anything at the front as yet. I say anybody can take anything to bits, it's putting it back together that's a problem. There is no gasket under here. You will see why in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our hammer and just tap ever so lightly under here. And that should come off. Now we can see our detent balls and detent plungers here. Good way to get those out without damaging them too much. Magnet. Oop, magnet. Now there's in the middle one. Oh James. I knew that would happen. <laughs> That's why you should sweep your floor first. The other ball is here. See in See inside there, see if we can push it out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's the other ball, so we can keep that one in there. Right. Now, how does these come out? <laughs> You'll notice that there's some oil seals on here. We have to replace those too. So we lift these out. And we don't really have to, if you, there's a way to lift these out, there's a long way, long time since we've done it. Move these to one side. And then, twist and turn, you can get the selectors out. Whoa, you don't have to adjust. You don't have to undo these here. Pull the fourth, third and fourth back. And there you go. That's those. Now. We can have a look inside. There's some uh, geary things in there. Yeah. This is why now we have to take the front off. So again, we're just going to use an air spare, uh, not that one, I'm oh, just testing here. We're going to put this, take this ring of uh, bolts off here. Again. Oh, that, that's a small one. Sometimes these bolts stick in the, the sockets. Again, I can't emphasise too much these plastic boxes here, how handy they are for three bucks. I bet Snap on selling for about $25 each. They make, uh, I did a video, I'll put, try and put a link at the top, but they actually make fantastic draw liners for your toolbox. And 
scratch those out. Oh. There's me telling you to use those ducats, now use a completely different one. Uh, extension. Now we need to just sort of pull this forwards a bit. I think we'll just use that crow foot. If I can find it, where do I put it? That's it. These are damned handy things if you get them in a set. Naturally, I haven't got a set. And then we're just going to pry off this cover. You can see now why we took the shaft off the side. There's a gasket inside there, discard that. Ooh, look at all that lovely sludge down there, look at that. That's lovely. Yeah, so there's, that's our thrust bearing, that's how it works. So when you turn when you turn that shaft, when you turn this, it pushes that out. Have a look. Now we get into the, the meaty bits. Ooh, that doesn't sound good, does it? Hmm. Right, what we're going to do now... Um, oh, you can see that. There's a series of tab washers on here, and there's a tab washer on this lock nut. Now, we don't have to worry about that one, but we've got to take this one off, I do believe. Um, that holds the, the bearing in, so... Oh, we'll use this. We'll use our dismantling tool again. Available in the shop, you notice that. Right, I'm just going to move that. I really noticed this. And grab myself. I, I don't put a great deal, when I do my uh, boxes, I only put a few nuts and bolts in at a time so they don't get mixed up. Um, right, so now, what side are those? Take that pin out of there. I think we have to take that pin out of there first. Wait a minute. I'm, a, I'm getting ahead of myself. Now. A little uh, split pin right down at the bottom of here. So don't use the old split pins again, but we shall keep them in there as a reference. Now, why would that one fit onto there? Don't tell me they've gone and put a... Uh, <laughs> well, they've gone and put a uh, half inch one on there. It must be the only bloody one that's on there. Um, half inch, just a second, back in a second. Yep. The only one, only uh, inch size. I haven't 
never learned that before. Right. So before you throw all your spanners away, you need a half inch one. Right, so that's that. That's into there. Take off the locking ring and we're going to buy a new one. We have to have a new one. Take off this ring, if it could come off. Yes, it does. Note it will only go in one way. Right. Well, I guess it's wise to spin that nut off there while we're at it. Oh, Christ. That's a big one. Mm, back in a minute. 